<clears throat> Sam, there's there's something that I am starting to believe in fully, <laughs> which is pod magic. Okay. Because so many things have happened on the pod, related to the pod. I mean, we've talked about it so many times before, but I think it's real. Be- and this is the thing that's making me think about it is... Are you allowed think- to believe in pod magic, like, as a Christian? Or is that considered <laughs> I- I don't idolatry? I maybe I'm going <laughs> to... Well, it's definitely... Did you say idolatry or adultery? I- <laughs> yeah, well, I guess it's a little bit of both, right? Um, <laughs> yeah. idol- to be honest, I kind of hedged because I realized I had never pronounced the word idolatry out loud and in my mind it's yeah i can tell it's (laughs) right you've (laughs) never you've never confronted yourself about it (laughs) it's true these are not these are not questions that i've that i've uh that i've asked of myself so uh, well maybe pod magic is just sort of like god met but you know the pod comes from god oh that's interesting okay so you're just saying the pod (laughs) has confirmed your belief in a higher power exactly whether that's god or pod well, maybe they're yeah, maybe they're interchangeable. Mm-hmm. Either way, a couple weeks ago, in the intro for uh, "Hey, I'm sorry," for some reason I just said "Hey, I'm walking here" instead, like very stupidly. Yeah, it was like among the worst intros I've done. I was which amused, is like really but, saying something. Yeah, that's that's fair though. But even I thought, yeah, like what is this even in reference to? But it's because I didn't know that it was in reference to the fact that two weeks later, with like two days notice, I would be flown to New York City for 24 hours. That's right. A whirlwind trip. Can you say why or are you still under embargo? I don't know if I'm under embargo for why I went. I just don't know if I can say my opinion. But I was flown out to watch John Wick 3. You met John Wick. (laughs) <laughs> you hung out for 24 to- <laughs> hours on a horse with John Wick. <laughs> exactly. So sick. Um, no, uh, yeah, so I went out to watch John Wick 3 and I interviewed um, the director. So keep an eye on exclaim.ca for <laughs> more coverage in the weeks to come. But leading up to it was really, uh, there was, there was <laughs> it was quite a, it was quite intense, to be honest, something that happened. Um, so this all was announced in the middle of the Calgary Underground Film Festival, which is probably the best week of the year in Calgary in terms of actually being able to go do something fun. Um, That's really so damning, we the, damning this festival with faint praise, but go on. Well, there's no other praise from me, unfortunately. <laughs> um, right. <laughs> so we were watching movies like every night. We were up late. Oh, and then I'm fun. now that I'm old. Now that I'm old, like when I go out and see my friends, like I can't sleep after because I'm all like, "Ooh, <laughs> <We're just laughs> I'm so I'm excited out. about friendship!" <laughs> yeah, or just like having speaking out loud to another human being in real life is like too exciting. <laughs> yeah, like you like had to modify it to be like, "Yeah, because you do yeah. this." You're also seemingly putting out at this point like four exclusives a week. Like, I'll look at... <laughs> you don't even tell me some of the times now because you'd be like, oh, hey, I'm talking to so-and-so. I'm like, sick, that's great. And then, like, today I was looking at the Twitter and I was like, you talked to Marston about new merch? <laughs> yeah, no, he just did it himself. I'm, I've oh, now delegated the exclusives. <laughs> he just did it for exposure. Damn, you're management now, eh? <laughs> I am. Anyways, so we were... We, it was like a hectic, crazy week. I had barely slept at all. And then I just get this thing that's like, hey, do you want to go to New York? I'm like, okay, sure. And then I figured I would eventually get a chance to be like, hey, let's schedule it so I have like a little bit of extra time. But instead, it was quite literally 24 hours in New York. So I I went to bed like really late and then I had to get up so early and go to the airport. And because it was such a short trip, I only packed like very, very strategically, I packed like half of a backpack of clothes. So I had one change of shirt. And Is you bragging about like light, light packing a crucial part of the story? You just want people to know that you're capable of traveling in a in a sort of <laughs> I mean, tight, can't right manner. Both. Okay, yeah, that's fair. Can't to be both. <laughs> so I get to the airport hella early. I mean, because also you got you're supposed to check in early and all this shit. It's so annoying. Um, <laughs> yeah, man, air, air travel is fun. Fly, you ever hear about flying and how bad it is? Dave, I know um, we were like not sure what we talk about on this episode, but I did not think we'd be talking about just what a pain it is to fly. <laughs> so, anyways, um, I also thought like, well, I've barely slept at all. I think I'm gonna like skip my my B and T this morning and try to actually sleep on the plane for the first time in my life. Um, and then, like five minutes before we took off, I Wait, went your and got B&T? a quad shot. My bean tea, my coffee. Oh, you know? I, I, yeah. Sorry, I heard B and T, and I was like, 
breakfast and toast. Um, <laughs> breakfast television. Right, yeah. Sorry. I, <laughs> I know I, my BET. I need to watch BET every morning. <laughs> that's right, yeah. <laughs> 106 in Park is the only thing that gets me going right. <laughs> no, so I was like, I'm going to skip my B&T, my Java, my Kofifi. Yeah. And then um, at the very last minute, I was like, no, fuck it. I need my, my quad shot Americano. I need my Spro. So I got, <laughs> I got a coffee, like hop on the plane. I, I also got a breakfast sandwich, stuffed it down. And then as I'm sitting down on the plane, I see right across the aisle from me is this dude. Well, first of all, these Americans to the left of me, like, traded seats so that the girl could sit with her boyfriend. And then they were, like, making out and canoodling the whole time. So that was one thing. And then across the aisle from me was this guy who runs something from New York City called the Found Footage Festival. Mm-hmm. Um, and they had they had been at Calgary Underground Film Festival showing their latest collection and what they do is they like collect vhs tapes and then show like the most fucked up bizarre things like, yeah it'll be like it's a bit of a like everything is terrible vibe but like less leaning on i guess corporate videos and commercials i remember seeing them do that do the tour in toronto i mean a decade ago maybe longer i haven't yeah. thought of that in forever but it is like truly sick because it's like and a then, really so, intimate and like a little more like as opposed to the sort of over the top insanity of everything is terrible, right? There's kind of also like some mystery science theater vibes to it. Like they'll sort of do a little commentary over top. And they had just played their this year's tour for the first time in Calgary. And I was thinking, yeah, like it's really good. I think my one criticism is that it's too welcoming to the audience. Like for me, I'd rather if it was like longer and more alienating and uncomfortable, but they've really (laughs) made it so that each video has like a clear joke. How unfortunate. um, Or whatever. (laughs) But I was like, oh shit, this guy's sitting right here and I didn't get to talk to him about the thing. I can really see how you have managed to take the podcast in the direction that that it has gone down. Like understanding (laughs) that that's your takedown of them trying to create like a slightly more accessible (laughs) version of their esoteric <laughs> yeah, exactly. film festival concept but yeah no good That's good good just because you need to you need to have like a well, well to go back to the precious coffee fee you need to have a coffee filter of sorts to keep out the normies which in this metaphor are the ground up beans <laughs> right so normies are, the... are beans <laughs> yes okay but, S- okay small so beans. All... that's that's why normies say things like small beans <laughs> exactly so I was like, okay, this dude is sitting right across from me. He's just walked by and I said, yo, you're from the Found Footage Festival. And he pounded it with me. I was like, hell yeah, we're going to like, I'm going to talk to him when he gets off. I'm going to tell him about the pod and tell him about all the fucked up videos that we find. And, you know, he might be interested. And either way, it'll be fun to talk to this guy because I had a lot of questions after the show. Cut to, and by the way, the people who booked my trip, bless them, uh, flew me into Newark despite it being 24 hours. So I, I was flying to the outside, way outside of Manhattan. Beautiful but Newark. I, I Home think, to Cory Booker. I think something about Newark is like the plane has to fucking dive bomb to land there. It's not a joke. Dude. Like flying in and out of Newark does legitimately like kind of suck. Like it's terrifying. Yeah. So there was like all this. And then there was like tons of extra turbulence too. And so I was wearing my red hoodie that I brought on the trip with my lightly packed bag. The dude from Found Footage Festival is like two seats back beside me, and then these people are making out beside me. Were you drip, <laughs> were you like, dripping or, or not? Like, what was the sort of drip status? I mean, I was like, I was like functionally dripping, <laughs> but it was freshly washed. I was like so ready to coordinate it with my other items all weekend, um, and instead, I just like puked in my mouth, but it like sprayed out a little bit onto my hand and all over my hoodie, uh, and my mustache and face was caked in puke because of how insane it was. And it was like literally like a loud belch that like and then it like reeked like puke. Like there wasn't a lot there was just a few drops on my arm, but it was like enough that everyone I'm sure knew that I puked all over myself. <laughs> and so I started my 24 hours in New York like caked in puke and, and I wanted to like tell everyone but I was like uh, I probably shouldn't be telling people I meet that I that I only have one change of clothes and I puked on myself today. Um, so instead, I I saved it for the pod, and I even when I texted Sarah, I was like, "Don't worry, I'll I'll talk about it on the pod." And she's like, "Oh my god, this is your therapy," and well, it is. You and I have managed to talk on chat, and then for like. 15, 20 minutes even before we recorded about various sort of things about your trip and just like the last the last week in both of our, you know, busy and exciting <laughs> yeah. lives. And you have kept this 
just stinky <laughs> secret from me. Like, it was just so weird because it was such a... I could also feel it coming. And norm, the, the previous times it's happened to me, I've been, like, insanely drunk. But doing a sober puke is even more oh. shameful somehow. And also I had had orange... I had, like, two orange juices <laughs> on the flight and four shots of Spro. Oh, man. And then you just covered in Newark juice? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like it was like it was truly not a lot of puke and I swallowed most of it, but there was definitely a bunch on my sleeve and then I like went to the I immediately went to the Newark airport bathroom where there was like just like 40 middle-aged vacuum cleaner salesmen I assume. <laughs> um and n- absolutely no sink pressure and like a broken soap dispenser and just tried to scrub the puke as best as I could, but I kind of had a bit of a whiff all weekend, <laughs> I think. <laughs> But that's just that's just the scent of New York, baby. <laughs> <laughs> like, do you imagine, like, you watching John Wick, like, sort of the, a man who can kill like twenty people with, you know, like, like a, a part of a ruler that he found <laughs> in the ground, and and you're there just scrubbing some vomit off of you, trying to figure out how to make yourself <laughs> not stink. Yeah, and then I did when when I finally got to my hotel room. Um, I did wash the puke off, but then my hoodie was soaking wet, so I couldn't wear it again for the rest of the weekend. So, yeah. And that was my 24 hours in New York. Well, the next time you're thinking of puking all over yourself before a trip, Josiah, (laughs) maybe you should. Damn, that's a good story, dude. Yeah. Do you think that guy from Fan Footage Festival noticed that I puked on myself? Um, yeah, hundred percent. Everyone knows. <laughs> like it was you can't really hide it, right? I mean it was like a loud belch and then the puke mostly was in my mouth and mostly swallowed, but just a little bit. It was like oh. it was like if you drink if you have like a big glass of water and you drink so much but then do like the fish face thing and just like spray a little bit out (laughs) god dude (laughs) yeah he knew it's funny that we were talking about stuff happening in airplane seats i think on the sclusi that we just (laughs) did right where i talked about the troop getting jerked off on the flight and no one said oh yeah yeah because i yeah that's true because yeah so if you haven't heard the sclusi there was also a guy like stroking his entire body on the way home and in front of me on that like it's the the frustrating thing is like you get to do this fun thing and go on a trip for work that, like, everyone would kill to do. But then you just want to complain about it the whole time because there's so many things to complain about. And then you feel guilty. But, like, on that same flight when the guy was, like, pulling on his legs and it looked like he was jacking off, the guy sitting right in front of me was, like, chewing some sort of nuts or something. Like, so many. And chewing with, like, I think his front teeth or something. Either way, I could see his chewing head. his front teeth. I could see his head vibrating and pulsing, and it was like, it was, I felt like it was making the whole cabin shake, just how hard he was crunching. I hate that. See, it, it, like, even when your job is good, life is still bad. Mm-hmm. And so the song we're talking about this week is... Oh, I wanted to also, because um, we have a lot of hours to fill, um, I also <laughs> want to point out that today is more importantly than this song we're about to talk about. Today is the release date. For Vampire Weekend's Father of the Bride. Probably oh, my con- most anticipated album. Yeah. yeah. So um, if anyone from the nation wants to talk about it, I think I'm going to maybe do a track-by-track track rundown. Either not, should I do it on my personal account or the pod account? I'm so confused <laughs> about where I belong in this world at yeah, this point. Yeah, where you exist. I think you should do exclusive <laughs> about it. Um, <laughs> just by myself. Just you alone, like just just sort of experiencing it. Again, it'll be like another one of the sort of uh, classic ambient episodes that uh, have been <laughs> such a hit. Such, yeah, such a so hit for he. Father of the Bride is, uh, I downloaded it today already. I've already listened multiple times. I've got a lot of things to say, so... Well, um, in terms of things getting leaked, I don't want to say who it is, but there's someone in the nation that has heard... Uh, the new Blink-182 song. So there's also like, there's, oh, yeah. there's a lot of new music just, uh, just uh, you know, Under the brewing out, out in the world. And so you're going to get your taste of something that you want. And then shortly we'll get a taste of something that I'm pretty sure I don't want. Um, yeah. It's like the, <laughs> exactly. I mean, the thing, the, a bl- new Blink-182 song is kind of like, I mean, it's nice in that we get to go on a trip, so to speak by having another song to talk about but it all but also we might puke on ourselves 
Yeah, um, someone nearby is jerking off, and you're like, or being jerked <laughs> off, rather. <laughs> And you're like, I respect it. Like, I respect Blink, you know? Like, thank you for your service, Blink slash the troop. But, like, I don't want to see your dick. And, like, where are you going to put the cum? Like, oh, you know, those are those are the questions that I have. I wish that the person that you know that's heard the song would give us a little bit more. I know. I know. It's uh, tantalizing. People are so it's- afraid of losing their jobs. It's like, <laughs> come on. <laughs> it's, it's, it's what do you need a job for? <laughs> Who cares? Yeah. To, to meet John Wick, dude. Like that's, that's true. I did meet him, and he was like, hmm, it smells like puke in here. And I was like, yeah, what the fuck? It must be yeah. one of your interns. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that you at one point did at least blame your puke stink on someone else <laughs> as a way no of asserting can... social dominance. Well, the nice thing was as soon as I was walking around outside in New York City, it just smelled like piss and shit and puke everywhere anyway, that's so thing, it was fine. Yeah. You're, just, you're just soaking up the vibe at that point. It's a good way of blending in. Speak, taking, and taking speaking of which... And I will say this, I did make sure not to wear the puke clothes, but I did hang out with quite a few pod-adjacent people, including Rebecca from um, our girlfriend podcast, Classroom Crush. Yeah. And Chris and Molly from And Introducing. It was basically a a pod trip. I didn't get a chance to make it over to Indiana to talk to uh, the They Might Be a Podcast Guy or whatever, but next Next trip. trip. Yeah. Which which <laughs> movies do you think are set in Indiana? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Having a big premiere there. I'm not <laughs> yeah. sure. But I'll make sure to save up some puke for then as well. <laughs> you know what's Good. funny, too? I kept thinking about there's this amazing viral video. I don't know if you've seen it before, but it's like this dude is so hungover on, the, on, on his local um, community news broadcast. And he's talking about his new film. And then he just like pukes all over the news desk. Dude, I have it's not so seen that. Good. <laughs> that was me. I was thinking about that a lot. But we're talking about the song Don't. So here are some movies set in Indiana. The Judge, um, which was oh, yeah. uh, Robert Downey Jr., um, Robert Duvall joint. Um, uh, now and Then was set in uh, in Indiana. So maybe maybe if they do a like Now or and Then or sequel, you might get a chance to go up there. Right. Uh, nine, I mean, nine, also... Miles lives out there, pre-Miles, so maybe uh, if there's ever pre-Miles the movie, um, <laughs> Right, yeah, the adaptation <laughs> of uh, his, his incredible <laughs> internet presence. Um, so, don't. A uh, song... Oh, Blue Chips is set in Indiana. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Anyway, uh, don't. A song by Blink-182. Uh, don't. That, eh, don't. <laughs> um, what, what do you think about the song, Don't, Josiah? I was thinking that it would be funny... If um, don't was actually a contraction of the word donut and that the apostrophe represented the U in that particular spelling of donut. So, you know, sometimes it is spelled with the um, U-G-H in the middle. I'm surprised that that wasn't your intro. I know, but then I was like, how am I going to get from puking on myself to there? And then I thought, you know, sometimes breakfast, Sam can be the one yeah. to say the the word and then you'd... I don't remember if you did or not. No. I sort of did did a Josiah where I like seemed like I was going to say it, and then I did a Hey, I'm walking here. Imagine if the guy from Found Footage Festival liked me so much that he did a Billy Madison and was like, "No, everyone's puking." <laughs> he <on> starts <laughs> puking, and, just, <laughs> <laughs> and then the 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 jerk off guy is puking and. Nut I don't know, like why do they have to do like fucking dive bombing Top Gun shit to get into Newark. I think it's just to keep the pilots engaged. Otherwise, they all fall asleep, and then they just cruise <laughs> Otherwise, they past all have to land in the Hudson. Yeah, exactly. That's, uh, that's the option. <laughs> you either sully it or, or you Josiah it, you know? Right. You've got a couple of options. I think so, this song, uh, well, first of all, what the fuck even is this song? Yeah, this is like, what was the deal with this? So we both had it in our heads that this was a Cheshire song. And like an hour before we started recording, we're like, wait, no, it's not. It's not a Cheshire song. So like what you you must know, you're asking rhetorically, and I suspect you know the answer. <clears throat> Tell the people about Don't by Blink-182. The genre of punk music was first <clears throat> conceived in, um, I don't know Go how on. to do a joke anymore. What if I just puke on myself? Um, <laughs> yeah, anytime you panic, I, if you just uh, <laughs> barf for laughs, it's not a bad Actually, idea. the very first thing I want to say f- for real is that it seems like the phrase, I mean, I guess don't is a word, it's a contraction, but contraction don't is huge to Blink-182 for some reason. Like every single 
most of their major songs have it in the lyrics, and they have so many songs with it in the title. These guys fucking love to say the word don't. Yeah, what, like, that's not very punk of you. Maybe this well, was the first sign that they were, maybe like, it not is. Do you think? Punks. Do you think it is punk, maybe? Oh, that's Like, the word no is punk, you know? So being like, don't. <laughs> I yeah, just I feel like, I feel like no, word, <laughs> no is word, punk, but don't is not punk. The word don't is just so, like, sleepovery. Like, when your your friend keeps poking you and you're don't. trying to play hang time. <laughs> I remember I was friends with this kid in junior high. Or, like, I don't call it junior high, but in, like, grade eight or something, I was friends with this kid who was, we just became friends through, like, youth group and through basketball. So, like, there was, like, a year where I was pretending that I was really into basketball. And we had a sleepover, and we were playing NBA hang time uh, for N64. And he, like, like I just love the the 1 a.m. strikes at a sleepover, and you're always in a fight with your friend for some <laughs> reason. But he got so mad at me for, like, for doing illegal uh, checks in the game hang time a game where you can play basketball as a person with a pig head and he was like <laughs> you're you're don't do the pushing button you have to just do like the like the more chill steel or whatever <laughs> i'm like what the fuck so it just makes me think of that sort of vibe to say the word don't well because i think no is directed at like authority you know it's like I'm saying I'm saying no to parents when they tell me to clean my room. I'm saying no to teachers when they tell me to do my homework. I'm saying no to my boss when he tells me to clean the puke off of my sweater because there are customers here. Whereas don't is like a much more – like don't is what the parents say. They say right. – uh, don't uh, not do your homework. <laughs> I, I, I don't know how to reverse engineer that particular set of anecdotes, but that's what it is. It's like, don't smoke cigs. They're bad for you, even though they look cool. Yeah. So, uh, so really, being a, being punk is about saying no to authority, but uh, but saying yes to everything else. Exactly. And a th- being an authority is about saying don't. You know. Oh, so the government yeah. says don't. You know. Uh, smoke weed, even though weed is tight, or uh, you know the 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 pilots say don't crash into the Hudson, <laughs> even though that would be maybe better than landing in Newark and making. Yourself I just keep sick. thinking that you know it's it's do it yourself, not don't it yourself, dude, <laughs> dude. Put that on a patch. <laughs> Let's make our millions. I actually think "don't it yourself" is a much better term. I'm gonna go by. I'm gonna do that instead. "Don't it yourself" is like a, a good, maybe just like more contemporary, like um, uh, it, like a, a reminder. I think to traditionally a lot of the the sorts of punks that kind of take up a lot of space, like maybe just don't. You know? Yeah, exactly. Don't it yourself, or when you're like, hmm, maybe I shouldn't start a new band. Like maybe I've maybe I'm done with this shit. <laughs> That's yeah. don't it yourself. Yeah. Do, does the world need three hours of me talking about Blink-182 this week? <laughs> I mean, that one, I think you might have found the the limitation of this new belief system. <laughs> right. So maybe it's the exception that proves the rule. But it's true. Yeah. <laughs> don't it yourself. That's good. Don't it yourself. Yeah. I mean, I do think on its own, don't is just it, – it's a very whiny word. If it's not coming from the authorities but it's coming from the – the lower rung on that mm-hmm. hierarchy, it sounds very whiny. Don't. It's true. No is is uh, taking a, a position of power, right? Can I have yeah. this? Can you do this? No. But don't already – you're already on your back foot on don't. Yeah, you sound like a little bitch. So it's already happening. <laughs> yeah, and you're like, don't. <laughs> <laughs> There's no oh. way to sound uh, truly, I think um, – Righteous when you're saying don't. Yeah, I mean, because I think it's, I think no matter what, it's, even if you say it assertively, it still sounds like you're making a request. There's still mm-hmm. room for the person to do when you say don't. Yeah, that's true. Do, don't has do in it. Whereas yeah. no <laughs> only has uh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh for oh no. <laughs> I think we this is a really good <laughs> linguistics podcast that we have. This is becoming the debaters on CBC. <laughs> <laughs> that's the caliber of comedy we're doing. Well, here's some good news is uh, that's not going to be the only time that CBC gets mentioned on, on this episode. So uh, <laughs> just to tease a little bit of 
<laughs> how much CDC <laughs> chatter is to come. Um, it, this it's song, my though, attempt to create an inepsy gate where I'm just like, what if we talk about Mr. D every episode for a month? <laughs> will someone give it a, will it, will it become a season? It's like, no, it turns out that that's From not From DB possible. to Mr. D. Um, <laughs> yeah. the, the trials of the worst podcast ever. <laughs> right. Well, today we're talking about a different Mr. D. Mr. Don't. <laughs> keep trying to start this sh- <laughs> terrible shit. Just, God damn, um, let it end. Don't let it hate yourself. Begin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the song is supposedly <clears throat> the song is supposedly from the, uh, something called the Buddha promo, and I don't really get it because it's on all of the reissues of Buddha as well. But but, some but it wasn't on the original to- version, eh? I guess so, yeah. But there's this, so I'm on uh, blink182.fandom.com because I'm part of the fandom. And <laughs> apparently this was released after Cheshi, actually, in a limited quantity to promote the re-release of Buddha. That's what they claim on here. However, if you look up the Buddha promo on Discogs, they, the nerds over there, strangely the notes on this, on this one is written in title case, like as if Tyler the Creator wrote it. But they've written on Discogs, <laughs> This demo was released sometime after Cheshire Cat in February 1995 in very limited quantities to promote the release of Buddha. It's a collection of old songs that are different, such as Princess Leia, A New Hope, Strung Out, which is a different version of Enthuse, Voyeur would be recorded for Dude Ranch, and Cheshire Cat. So there's a different version of, of Voyeur. But of this tape, someone says, no copies of the promo. Well, they're Have trying to say no cop. <laughs> they're trying to say it's not. Anyways, a lot of, pe- a lot of collectors think that this tape is a fake. However, I've also seen a listing of this tape being sold for $900, and people aren't mad about that. But I say, if some fucking mouth-breathing nerd wants to buy a tape for $900, then more power to you for selling it for that much. That's what we should do. Like, you selling a handful of cum rags for, like, cum rag money, that's <laughs> not how we really monetize this podcast. We have to... Drum bootlegs. up, yeah, interesting bootlegs. bootlegs. Just be like, oh, like guys, we didn't realize this, but um, we, you know, even before the new album, like we did do the counter on because this keep kind of keeps happening, right? People keep saying like, oh, is that on the list? Like, like stuff like this, which yeah. I'm always happy to discover was on the list. There are at <laughs> present only 155 Blink songs, and I believe we have named all of them. But like, yeah, if we were but to like come the- out and say. <laughs> <laughs> we fucked up. There's actually 156. There's this other song called like "Do," and it's <laughs> <laughs> and it's like super rare, and we, and it's only on this like this demo tape that was like pre Buddha. It's like their version of the basement tapes. It's incredible, and we talk about it, and then we're like, and there's one copy, and it's on Discogs for two thousand dollars. Then you and me split the money. Like that's a good business. Well, I was already thinking of actually making a full on bootleg of the demo number two or whatever. Oh, yeah, just selling um, that, like, like, just like making bootlegs of things that people know definitively do exist in the world. Yeah, but, I mean, I think you might be able to do it with that one. But with this one, the other thing is there's all these huge issues with uh, licensing for Buddha. Like, we've tried to touch on it before, and it's too confusing and quite boring. But um, Kung Fu Records, which is run by the Vandals, and they're, like, super right-wing, right? Aren't they? Yeah, I think they're, heard? Yeah, they're – the Joe Escalante, I think, is um, – Right of center, for sure. And in the States, center is, like, already basically makes you a fascist. So um, right, I'm, exactly. I'm pretty sure they're on the, the wrong side of the culture wars, for sure. So, I mean, I guess also pop punk is obviously, like, the most centrist, awful genre, politically speaking, to begin with. But yeah. um, so the Kung Fu Records, like, reissued Buddha the first time when, when everyone's older brother who was into snowboarding had Buddha. It was probably the Kung Fu Records version because the, the original was put out by something called Filter Records or something. Yeah, hell um, yeah. Welcome to the but, fold, motherfuckers. So on Kung Fu's Bandcamp, they've written this thing that I just sent you. So starting at the second paragraph, it says, there's a bit of controversy over it, but what we can say for sure is that if we didn't put this out, MCA slash Universal Records was going to bury it with all of their legal might. Kung Fu, owned by one attorney, hired another attorney, and spent tens of thousands of dollars to prevent the death of these recordings. The original label never would have been able to do that, and given the choice, would not have even contributed to the legal fund necessary to pull it off. We fought like hell to keep it from MCA, so Blink fans could enjoy it, and we have proudly paid hundreds of thousands of dollars in royalties to the band, including Scott Rayner, over the years. We have no reason to dis 
To disbelieve the band's version of the history of these recordings, we are proud to have this as part of our catalog because of the music, its historical significance, and how hard we worked to keep it. Hmm. So, yeah, kind of neat, I guess. Maybe. Yeah, that's kind of neat. I'm not going to lie. I was like kind of half paying attention to you and half reading about the fact that Joe Escalante might be a judge now. Like he's he was the a judge. Conser- yeah, like he is. He's a judge, I think. So that's weird. So maybe he doesn't own Kung Fu Records, but well, no, he does. I mean, that's that's his, that was his thing, right? Like he um, they put out a bunch of Atari stuff too. I like I own a lot of Kung Fu things. So, do you think yeah. Scott Rayner like is pretty rich or? I'm Scott Rayner. I don't know because did he get songwriting credits? Well, I mean, in the statement they say they've paid out hundreds of thousands of dollars in royalties to the band, including Scott Rayner. But I guess that's not. If this is from like thirty years ago and he got one hundred thousand dollars, it's not very good. Yeah. So like, I don't know. I I I I bet Scott like probably did okay at the time, and I don't know, but I doubt he's like really enjoyed a lot of the fruits of that. If only he would come on so we could interrogate his bank account. Exactly. Yeah, bring bring your logins, Scott. <laughs> yeah, come come on our finance podcast. <laughs> oh man. Okay. The other thing about flying is that there's always this this commercial on Air Canada before the movie where it's like this fucking. It's like Wealth Simple, but it's shittier and more Canadian. Mm. And there's like this investor guy, and I fucking hate his guts. Now he's like talking to a to a small classroom, being like, "Yeah, investing starts with the word in," and that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, mega mega financial. We want to bring you in to our family, and that's exactly. the most important part. And all the students are like taking notes and nodding. You're like, "What the fucking shit is this?" I know that ad because it's, it's so burned in your brain for some reason. Yeah, yeah. And like, I for that guy who was like basically jacking off beside me kept bumping my thing, and it would make the movie restart. So I had to fast forward through. Uh, bad oh. times at the El Royale so many times, and that was such a horrible movie to begin with. Is that it's not like, good, eh? No, it's like the ultimate cousin movie. Like my, <laughs> Wait, like it's like that? cousins. Any cousin would fucking love that movie. <laughs> right? Just saying, like when you're at Thanksgiving, like you have a cousin you'd be like, "Hey, I know you like movies. Have you seen Bad Times at the El Royale?" And they're like, oh. "Yeah." Like I have one specific cousin who would be like, "Best fucking movie of all time." Bad Times at the El Royale. <laughs> it's fucking incredible. You got to watch it. You'll love it. And or, or he'll like sit me down and force me to watch it and he'll just stare at me the whole time and make sure that I'm reacting correctly. <laughs> oh, right. And I think every, right, every – Yeah, we've talked about this experience before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every cousin movie now has John Hamm in it as well. <laughs> right. <laughs> I hey, don't uh, know why. I, I intended to ask you this before we started recording and I'm going to forget. But have you seen Under Silver Lake yet? No, I heard it's horrible. Really? Fuck. Okay. That's all. Yeah. Okay, we can we can move on now. <laughs> um, so that's a little bit of history about the song. As for the song itself, I think there's actually a lot of really good elements here. It's uh, the the riff off the top is like legitimately kind of a sick riff. But it, this is one of those songs that like let's do a couple times today and then before we recorded and like it's not there. It's like completely left my brain. Totally. Uh, there's not much you can remember, but I will say like even just. We always say, yeah, you always have that one song that starts with palm your guitars, and then you always have the one that starts with bass chords. But this one, like, starts with bass chords in such a fucking weird way, where it's it almost sounds new funky. metal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, it starts like an Incubus song. I kind of wonder, um, because we've talked about this before, when we when we dip back into older catalog, especially things that we're less familiar with, and especially things that aren't quite as, like, good as, as the breakouts, that like this, this all came out at the same time. Like we're like, ah, it's so old. But you're like, there were other bands doing like amazing shit at, at in this exact year, like in 1994, which I'm pretty sure is when this came out. Yeah. Um, although I guess like I'm not sure if it was like a promo or whatever, if it was a different time. But like this is when you know like Dookie comes out, right? But also 1994 is when the first Corn record comes out. So maybe Whoa. there was just like. You know, a little bit of energy in California. I I don't really know. Like, I, I understand that California is actually quite large. So uh, there's a there's a and I, at San Diego is kind of at the bottom. So there's a good chance the corn was like pretty far away. But like, you know, it's it, I still like to think that maybe there was like this exchange of like Californian uh, funky metal energy that was happening at that time. That's so bizarre that those two things you just mentioned could come out this year. And then also this, because, like, something about this, the naivete of it and the shittiness of the recording and everything, like, this seems like it should be from 1981, 
not the same year as Dookie and Corn. It's just so like, like un, underdeveloped by comparison. And same thing with Smash, right? Like Smash is 1994. And so to think that like the bands that get lumped into kind of ruining punk in the 90s by people who are older than us, um, like Blink, Green Day, and Offspring, and just thinking of the dramatically different phases of their career that they were at at this exact time. It's so weird. Like, yeah, I and, just think, like, how could you be this corny if that other stuff exists? But I guess you just didn't have the access. That's it. It's like, but once they heard the first Corn album, that's where you see the, like, massive leap in quality that leads to Cheshi and then eventually to, to Dude Ranch. That's all uh, that Bakersfield uh, sound, I think, seeping in. <laughs> the Bakersfield sound, baby. Uh, Bakersfield is home of um, one of the <laughs> one of the most integral people of the nation, Doom Q West. Oh, so, shit. Shout out to Bakersfield. I wonder how far. Um, I'm just looking up on maps how far Bakersfield is from uh, San Diego. Did you, I feel like, like it's not very close. I, I, yeah, it, I, they do feel like they, they, they share very different like psychic um, spaces. But I don't, I don't necessarily want to jump into this if you have like really specific thoughts about other things in it. But the one thing that really jumped out for me when listening to it uh, is the fact that, like, oh, hold on, finding out how long it would take to drive from San Diego to Bakersfield. That's a seven <laughs> hour drive from Bakersfield to San Diego. Yeah, so. so that's probably why they did, that's probably why this song doesn't sound like corn. Yeah, I think so. So, uh, <laughs> so the one thing that really jumped to, to, to me was like kind of lyrically, like I just sort of had it on the background. And there's like a line in it that sort of, it feels almost like, um, like a uh, David Cross Arrested Development kind of thing where it's like, uh, and I don't want your lies and I don't think that I'm better than you inside. Like it, it, star- it starts to sound <laughs> like it's this is like the way that when I read it out loud, it's very clear what he's saying. But the way that it gets broken up in the song, it sounds like um, like something that he's saying is better than having you inside of him. Like that's the way that it comes <laughs> right. across in the song. <laughs> <laughs> Which I thought was like, you know, sick and in line, obviously, with sort of where they would take uh, their sort of sexual play moving forward. But then eventually I realized that it was just like kind of uh, it's just like, and bad. Poetry. Yeah. Yeah, that's totally uh, I don't know. I did haven't I was planning on just kind of looking at the lyrics for the first time right now. Mostly I was thinking, is that actually how you spell the word segue? How <laughs> no, it's this is not how like, segue people have been just... spelling it like the the item that you ride on. Right. So the, the, this other verse is, and now you make a segue as you turn your face away. And the, these lyrics have been transcribed, I believe, by a user here named Mark Landon. Are you also on songmeanings.com? <laughs> I am, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, uh, <laughs> so they've spelled it like the product, the segue, which is great because it sounds like, and you make, like, this person was the producer of the segue. Like they, <laughs> yeah. which we all know and is now a quite you a make disastrous a segue. investment. Yeah. Now you make a segue. As you turn your face away, I know your words aren't true. So, so that basically someone's like, look, I just invented something. It's basically <laughs> like a pogo stick, but it also has tires. And then they turn away and you're like, look, that's not true. There's no <laughs> fucking way. That's, that's fucking bullshit. <laughs> no, Have you ever been no on possible. a Segway? I haven't. Although uh, one time Sarah was visiting a friend in L.A. and she went to the studio audience of the Ellen show um, and everyone in the audience got a free segue except she what? didn't because she's Canadian. <laughs> they didn't give them to Canadians. Oh my reason. God. <laughs> yeah. Just the idea of like having to like ship a segue back then that would not have been cheap. <laughs> Take it on the plane. <laughs> yeah. Just and then like, I puke all over it. <laughs> it's just this. <laughs> so good. Yeah. Friggin Newark juice covered segue. Um, the, the, it seems like on song meetings dot, uh, com, the, the the line that's resonating with everyone, I wanted to read the comments with you on here because it seems like a good way to f- kill time. Um, but it says, all those words that you don't say just mean less and less each day. You can't make me shed a tear. And everyone's like, God, that's so deep. But there's a double negative there. So I don't really understand, like, the words you don't say just mean less and less. How could a word that's unspoken mean less than just already its base level of silence? Yeah, I feel like it's like um, like a real attempt at, at sort of like incredible depth through contradiction where you're like, wow, how can that how can you go back to the future? You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> like it's, a, it's a bit of that vibe. Also, sorry, I'm like I'm, I feel like we need to address this right at the top because you, you've already scrolled down. So um, I, I assume that the lyrics have been transcribed by someone named Mark Landon. But then 
in the in the credits, sort of right uh, right above where we get oh, to the yeah, names, yeah. it says lyrics were submitted by a user name. So the user's name is Screaming Infidelity, but then it says don't as written by Mark Landon. And so I just need to ask this question, which is like, is there any chance this is a cover? <laughs> it's, I don't think it is, but there is, I guess, a chance that the song was written by Mark Landon, the American actor and adopted son of Bonanza and Little House on the Prairie <laughs> star, Michael Landon. Oh, um, oh okay. So that's... Unfortunately so, passed away May 11th, 2009. So his actual 10-year oh, death anniversary is coming up. Damn. Um, and he's taken this secret to the grave with him. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, Mark Landon. He died at 60. Um, and we're again talking about the author. I mean, sorry, the actor Mark Landon, who is credited with authoring Blink 182's song, Don't. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he, so, yeah, he, uh, let's see, he was adopted in 1956 by the 20 year old actor Michael Landon. Damn. Mark Landon appeared in three movies, including the CBS television movie Us which was written and directed by Michael Landon, his dad. So fucking nepotism, even with these people I've never heard of. Bullshit. Fuck them. Also, imagine, sorry, imagine being 20 and adopting an eight-year-old. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a little old. That's fucking weird. <laughs> that's some Namba shit. Yeah, that's a, that is not right. Also, like, I always find this kind of curious. So, um, unfortunately, Mark Landon does not have a very robust Wikipedia page, which is part of why we don't know. If you I like how song. you used to resist my... Uh... <laughs> My <laughs> misdirections, and now you go fully into them. Like, well, what am I supposed anything? to do? Just sit here and stew? <laughs> You're like, I've, written, mad I've actually started my, my dissertation on Mark Landon. <laughs> and, yeah. uh, <laughs> but, but, like, under the death segment, it's just like he was found dead in his house, blah, blah, blah. He was interred here. And this is uh, Hollywood sheriff's investigators stated that there was no suspicion of foul play. Why would you say that? Like, if I don't assume most people die under suspicious circumstances. Like, I assume, you know, he's 60 years old. That's a little young. But, you know, we all got to go. Like, in, if, if in your obituary, Josiah was like, Josiah, he, he died. He left behind his Choked podcast. Choked on his own puke <laughs> yeah. on a plane. Yeah, survived by Woody. Um, there was nothing <laughs> strange happened, though. So, like, look away. Yeah, it is kind of weird when they say that. So you're thinking it's some sort of cover-up. I'm thinking that it's a cover up related to this song. No, I'm, I'm thinking, yeah, maybe this all guy's <laughs> into QAnon, but it's like he wrote this song for Blink. Blink becomes uh, insanely famous. This is 2009, so Blink is like, you know, so, firmly okay, here's what established happened. at this point. Yeah. Kung Fu Records is debating with MCA about buying this song. They're like, mm-hmm. look, there's this last track on the album. But there's not a lot of info about it. We can't figure out what if it's from this tape or what. We can't figure out um, what who wrote it. It's credited to someone named Mark Landon, who's been who died in the early 2000s. I mean, it's yeah. feasible that he wrote it. But we have all these questions for you. So can you just we we just want to ask you some questions? And then Mark Hoppus is like, don't. <laughs> And they're like, sorry, what? We, can you at least tell us what the song is called? Don't. 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 <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> We're writing it down as don't. But it really, he was saying don't dig into this um, this <laughs> deep conspiracy yeah. maybe that we're implicates gonna... Bonanza <laughs> and <laughs> <laughs> Bonanza Little House on the Prairie. But get this. His paternal half-brother uh, directed and wrote Disturbia, <laughs> Paranormal Activity <laughs> 2, 3, and 4. Uh, wow. He directed Happy Death Day, which was actually pretty good, uh, and Happy Death Day to You, which I have not seen. I've heard it's quite bad. Um, mm. Well, you know what? It sounds like that one brother uh, really flew after his adopted brother died. So there's, again, that might be why they were so quick to say there was no foul play. Yeah, just don't investigate it. Let's let Christopher don't. get it. Don't. don't. You know what? <laughs> Something that uh, I, I, I now need uh, uh, to, to say, which is very important. Um, oh, just getting a call from Nova Scotia, Prince Edward Island. Nobody important there, that's for sure. Um, well, you should answer it I on should, the pod, I, on speakerphone. No, I hung up. It's too late. Uh, which is the one thing that don't really makes me think of, especially in that voice you're saying, is like when we used to uh, tour a lot more, we played in, in New York, obviously, like a handful of times. And you, know, you always get stuck, like driving across the stupid fucking city, like no one should drive there. But when you come in and out of, of the tunnels where like the traffic is particularly heinous, there's all of these signs because they're just like, everyone is, no one's moving. It's fucking chaos. Everyone's mad. 
and obviously the, the noise that results from that uh, is substantial. And so there are signs everywhere that just say, don't hawk. <laughs> Which always like has struck us like this is like a, a decade plus joke with with the band is like it's not like no honking honking not allowed or like please do not honk or whatever sign you would have in like Calgary or Toronto it's just like don't honk don't fucking honk which is like always <laughs> has struck me in this like very superficial and stupid way as like the most perfectly New Yorkian thing oh. I'm just like you know what's the most fuck that don't is, fucking I- honk. <laughs> Also, it's insane how when you like go to pay for something or or take cash out or whatever, it says dip your card. <laughs> like, what the fuck? What is wrong with you? It's, it's very like, sexual. Dip your card. It's so yeah. bizarre. Yeah, I do not want to dip be, with you. <laughs> there's got to be like hundreds of other <laughs> verbs you could use than dip. <laughs> like, are you children? <laughs> Couple I was of like, I just, over here. <laughs> I have an intimate relationship with the word "don't," probably <laughs> just because I'm so annoying to everyone around <laughs> me at all times. Right? Yeah. <laughs> That's good. So, I've so heard okay, "don't" you, in every voice from every um, <laughs> right. You could a chorus of "don'ts." The Josiah Hughes story. So. <laughs> You you obviously looked a little bit at the Mark Landon thing. That that that's you've already kind of gone down this rabbit hole. I mean, not really. I think it's just probably that um, screaming infidelity who uploaded this just accidentally wrote Mark Landon. Probably. Right. Don't just you think? I mean, it, there yeah. Can't I be. mean, I'm not finding any other like information about this. So. Uh, yeah. Although it's it's also been again probably because all of these websites are like owned by the same. Uh, like, Q and on, they're all owned people. by Q and on. But like literally on lyricsondemand.com, on lyrics.com, on letssingit.com, my favorite website. <laughs> um, oh, this is there's at least something on Blink 182 online about Mark Landon. Also, apparently, Mark Landon was a producer for Eminem and Madonna. I don't know, man. I've I, I wish I did did some research instead of just doing this live on the pod. But anyway, Mark Landon, Mark Landon has been challenging my ideas about what success looks like. I'm reading on this blog spot that I just found. <laughs> Sick. Um, well, is it certainly <laughs> challenging the ideas of what a successful podcast looks like. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think we're challenging that idea. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Constantly. No, so let's, let's instead let's read. Dot com. Let's, let's yeah, let's check out some of these comments on here because they're. Like, it's weird. No one on Reddit has ever really talked about this song, I don't think. Unless I just got lost in a sea of them saying don't to each other. <laughs> right, yeah. When I was, it's very hard to Google this song. But there are, in, it seems like in 2002, 2003, 2004, the song meanings community, fresh off of 9-11. Maybe 9-11 had them being like, don't, you know? <laughs> don't, <Enough."> yeah. <laughs> yeah, 9-11 was really uh, amplified the don'tness of... Uh, uh, <laughs> Uh, of, of America, for sure. Because <laughs> you can't really say no to it. Um, no, that's the, that's gonna, true. You're powerless. Those guys again, are going to do whatever saying, they right? want. Like when you're when you're don'ting, you don't have power. And so, yeah, America was forced for the first time. America used to be able to say no. Now America had to say don't. That's oh, that's so interesting. Don't um, post nine eleven America. <laughs> right, I mean, or ahead. they also could they maybe I mean. I don't know how it works that they did it to themselves too, um, 9-11. So that's the other issue. Maybe this is an example of don't it yourself. <laughs> right. This is the yeah, full don't it yourself era. This is the worst fucking episode ever. Okay, Elmo Kid on 2002 wrote, this is one of those songs that Blink writes that can just take this huge feeling and wrap it up into a couple of line. And all those words you don't say just mean less and less each day. You can't make me shed a tear. The song really helped me through a hard time and is to this day one of my favorite songs. So basically this Elmo kid was having a hard time and they just needed some someone on their behalf to say, don't. Just, just don't. Um, <laughs> you know, I'm looking at YouTube and there's also like some real, real love for it here. Um, Blink's old stuff is really good. Stuff. All you haters who only like the new stuff. That's it's a, kind of like a, a bit of a fire bars there from uh, Scan 919. <laughs> this song really has good. a surprising number of plays on YouTube, though. Like I, sometimes like when we did I'm Sorry, I was shocked because I felt like that song had like 
two thousand plays on like the at least on the official Blink account. And this one's yeah. at like three hundred thousand, which seems really high for a song that doesn't even have a thread on Reddit about it. I know it's crazy, and I guess we did kind of breeze past talking about the song because we've been talking about the word "don't." But I do want to say, <laughs> like, um, in addition to the bass, like you were saying, the riff is so good, and there's something about the dynamics of the song that is really good, even compared to like later Blink. Like, it really has a weird zone that it gets into where the bass and drums are going crazy, but there's barely any guitar, and it has this bizarre energy that not very many early Blink One Eight Two songs have. Yeah, I mean, it has full-on just, like, cool basement band vibes. Again, like, this is one of those things that we repeat a lot when we talk about these. Um, also, Ashley in- informed me that I should let um, the nation know that if they could successfully guess what she's cooking. What, you, what do people get if they guess what you're cooking? Uh, what was it? Oh, you said... Autograph photo of you signed by me. Yeah, so Ashley will autograph a photo of, of me, like Sam. So she will, <laughs> she will autograph a photo of, of me but in, in her uh, own signature. So. But no, it's... No, no, no. No, no. It's fucking live your life. Um, but what if yeah. I can guess it? Oh, well, I guess you would get the, uh, uh, get the thing. Go <laughs> ahead. What do you think? What do you think, Josiah? <sighs> I don't know. She's always cooking, like, something, like... Like healthy sounding. Mm. Is it healthy? Do I get a hint? Okay, yeah. I don't know. Hey, Ashley. Yeah. Does Does I want to try to guess? Can you get a hint? Uh, it's uh, you can eat. Oh it. wait, you can eat it. Is it healthy? Uh, parts of it. Parts of it are healthy. That doesn't really help mm. you. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just gonna guess pasta, but I mean that's too vague. It's, it's not pasta though, unfortunately. So. Okay. Well, I mean, that's great. I'm so glad. Uh, it's funny because, like, <laughs> I got so I got glad. mad at Sarah last week for, like, watching Netflix slightly. I could, like, <laughs> barely hear it in the background. I was like, turn that down. Oh, yeah. Well, we've talked about this before, but, like, no. Uh, the <laughs> Now I've made her paranoid. It's definitely, it, we have just, like, a, it's, uh, you've been in our house. We've talked about this before. Our house is just, like, a long tube. It's just open. So there's, like, kind of nothing yeah. you can do if it's, um. Uh, you know. Yeah, you can't you can't say don't in your house. Say, no, I certainly fair. certainly can't like uh, as like a, a person sort of attempting to be a decent partner, just be like for four hours every week when um, I have my time with Josiah to talk about <laughs> um, <laughs> New York accents and uh, the 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 Landon family dynasty in Hollywood. <laughs> this is okay. Be this to get silent. back on. To get back on topic, this is the greatest song meanings when I just sent it to you. It's really, I'm going to have to screenshot this and post it because it needs to be viewed to be fully appreciated. Oh, yeah. This um, is, a, this is, this is uh, as much a visual experience as it is a reading experience. So this was uploaded by is 2 blink 182 on in 2006, March 27th. Really a spring sort of vibe. There's a lot of <laughs> things from around this time of year that keep popping up. But this person has written in the most, like, imagine Zs and zeros and everything everywhere. They've written, I don't want you lies. No one wants lies because you get caught out and it hurts the person you lied to, sad face. I know this song reminds me of my ex and his lies, a-hole. <laughs> so- <laughs> Yo, this is honestly makes me love the song. Like, that person writing it definitely manages a Claire's, right? <laughs> yeah, this is Claire's <laughs> management vibes, for sure. Like, I can smell secondhand smoke while reading this. And it was t- definitely, I think when you type in that style, it comes out that way because you have fake nail extensions while you're typing. <laughs> right. I always <laughs> just like people who censor themselves swearing on the internet. <laughs> yeah, it's so good. Like, I don't want... <laughs> Like, to be writing asshole, because then I guess I won't get into heaven? Is that, what's the deal with swearing in the church? Uh, I don't know. That's too confusing and uh, broad. Okay. But I will say this. I got myself in trouble with that a couple weeks ago because, um, is it Olivia Munn? Is that who it is from the newsroom? Yeah. She's on the the newsroom, right? Yeah, of course she's on the newsroom, the greatest show on on television ever. The greatest show of all time. I just forgot her name. But she did this, like, call. She did this call out post about the website Go Fug Yourself because they said that her <sighs> shitty outfit was I hate shitty. I that I know about this. Like, it's one of those yeah. things where there's so much really, really important shit happening every day, and I have an opinion. Like, I read enough <laughs> to have a fucking opinion about this. 
I mean, she did, like, the worst imaginable take probably ever. Like, the most tone-deaf celebrity who wants sympathy kind of take. And I thought, oh, man, like, I love Twitter trolls of a specific caliber so much. Yeah. Specifically, the user GetFiscal is, like, the greatest Twitter user of all time. Um, So I was trying to go on his level and do something really dry and sarcastic. So I replied to her and said, you know from reading this over and over again, I've finally realized that go fuck yourself is a play on the F word. <laughs> and that's really not a good look ladies. Um, and then <laughs> instead of like anyone seeing my joke and going in on it instead for like a week and a half, like literally hundreds of centrist, like he'll, I'm with her type ladies were dunking on me nonstop and being like, "Oh, do you need your fainting couch because you, some ladies said a cuss word?" <laughs> like, it's really good. I think if you go to the uh, Olivia Munn post, you'll see me just getting absolutely wrecked <laughs> by a bunch of wine moms. It's really good. <laughs> that's sick. Congrats, man. That's, I'm sure I that feel was like, like a- I should join the <laughs> army. <laughs> Do they take away your phone when you join the army? I hope so. You should um, not be allowed to tweet if you're also defending um, <laughs> defending the country. All right, I've got a whole bunch of bullshit for us to talk about in a second. But first, I thought I found this post. It's kind of a general Blink 182 post, so we can talk about it this week. But this is actually a Reddit post that I really love. It's really cute and funny. Um, this is from five years ago. It's uploaded by Gakash. Um, and it says, why I feel bad, and I think I owe Blink, like, 20 bucks. And it's literally just a history of them stealing Blink-182 albums. <laughs> Amazing. Like, each album, how they stole it. Oh, so it's like, not one, even like they downloaded it illegally. Some of this is, like, straight-up actual, like, theft from a store. No, it's, like, <laughs> stealing. Like, it's, like, it's, like, the kind of, like, Bart Simpson juvenile delinquent 90s behavior that I wish... <laughs> I had the courage to participate in, but that is where my Christian guilt absolutely. Oh my god! I never, I've never goes. stolen. Like I've downloaded some shit illegally. I've never stolen anything in my life, like from a store. The other day, I like ate one blue whale from the bulk section, and then I felt guilty after. Yeah, at the grocery good. store. <laughs> like you know, uh, Loblaws is a, is a massive corporation that is certainly um, deprived of profits by you stealing blue whales from them. I mean, well, you're allowed to sample the grapes. Why can't you sample the blue whales? You can sample grapes? I don't know. It seems like you a thing you could do. <laughs> I don't know. I think you've been doing theft, grape theft this whole time, bro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so the first one, the Enema Strikes Back. Um, I don't even remember what that is. Is someone going to get mad at me? What's the Enema Strikes Back? Uh, I, don't, I don't even know. Oh, that's the subtitle of the Mark, Tom, and Travis show. <laughs> oh. We really disrespect that album a lot, and it makes people get very angry. Yeah, I don't give a shit. Stole it from a multimedia store. I guess that's like a future shop. Is that what they mean by that? Yeah, right. Or like it, Western Canada, we had A and B Sound. Okay. Um, yeah. So the and the, oh, sorry, the reason that this person stole they've this is how they justify their theft. I don't know if, how this will work when they're standing before the Lord, but um, <laughs> their mom was Jehovah's Witness and they weren't allowed to buy the Blink-182 CDs. They were only allowed to listen to Garth Brooks. What does it say? Garth Brooks' album with Rodeo? <laughs> yeah. Oh, the, the album that has Rodeo on it, I see. Uh, um, okay. <laughs> and, and, and they were allowed to listen to Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat <laughs> and Phantom of the Opera. Oh, that's so really, this that's lesser, lesser weather, to <laughs> be honest. Sounds like things that you listened to, probably, by choice. <laughs> when your, your parents are, like, buying you Blink CDs and you're like, no, please, please buy me Joseph. Joseph. His coat <laughs> has so many colors. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, they stole the Enema Strikes Back from a multimedia store. Um, Enema of the State stole it from my cousin. I like that. That's yeah. good. Like, <laughs> fucking cousin. Your cousin probably loves... I think if you love if you love Bad Times at the El Royale, then your cousin probably fucking hates it. Like, you're the other kind of cousin <laughs> right. in the yin and yang of cousin energy. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. If you look around and know none of your cousins love Bad Times at the El Royale, you're the cousin <laughs> who loves the films of Drew Goddard. Okay, the second one stolen was Enema of the State. Stole it from my cousin. I don't feel bad about this because she could listen to whatever she wanted, when she wanted, and damn it, I loved Blink. Third album, Dude Ranch, stole from FYE. 
To be extremely fair, FYE wanted like 19 bucks in the mall for it. That's like, I, I mean, I don't know what the sort of CD prices were like for you growing up, but like, especially like anything remotely punk, which like Dude Ranch sort of was, it would be like 25 or $30. Yeah, well, especially if you're going to HMV, like you had to go to the multimedia stores because they were, they were underpricing the CDs so that you'd go in and be like, oh, I'm going to buy also a five disc DVD changer. Yeah, while I'm yeah, here. yeah, exactly. Um, fourth and fifth album, Buddha and Cheshire Cat, stolen from Best Buy or Target. I can't remember. The My days is as a, a fucking thief. klepto. My days as a thief were almost at their pinnacle. I decided to go for the big heist. I'd like to say there was Ocean 13 methods involved, but I just went to the bathroom, knocked it out of the case, removed the wrapper, stuck it in my pockets, bought a Coke, and walked out of the store. When the alarm went off, I held up my Coke, looked confused, and they waved me by. This person yeah. not understand how those, like, like the, the, the Cokes aren't, like... Don't have the, the the shit in them. Yeah, that doesn't really work. Ooh, you got to bring. I think you got to carry in a bag from a different store. Yeah, exactly. I've been shopping all day. The Coke is a weird way to disguise it, but look, it clearly worked for them. It clearly worked. And then Toy Page, they bought, they stole from Target. They just said Target's really easy to steal from. They don't give a shit. This person owes Blake more than twenty dollars. I gotta say, I'm, I'm just adding well, this up in my mind. Read the justification at the bottom. There's like some math they've done. By my count, I've so, well wait. What's this last one? Oh, they did. They didn't. Uh, they, they bought. bought they okay. bought all the last ones. Yeah. So by my count, I've straight up stolen five albums from Blink's pockets. A standard. They've also done weird capitalization. What is up yeah, with people capitalizing shit? Up. A standard album costs like fifteen bucks. At least it did back in the day. I do everything digital now, but whatever. I, we'll say fifteen. That's seventy five between the three of them. Now I don't know how much they actually make per unit sold. Out of, oh, who fuck? I'm, do I have to keep reading this? <laughs> I don't know. I thought you'd know because you're in the biz. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> you know, in terms of Spotify streams, uh, 25%, blah, 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 blah. Uh, I owe you 20 bucks. Um, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I can't believe you stealing you think all this shit would be, Do you think Blink-182 would be offended if they were just like, hey, here's 20 bucks? And yeah, they're just like... I don't I don't accept bills lower than a hundred. Yeah, they haven't seen a twenty dollar bill in, in years. Skiba <laughs> has, probably. <sighs> so you yeah. never you never so, stole anything? I'm trying to think. No, I don't think so. Damn. It's like a couple of cops. And here. you're saying you never have either. No, nah, it's cop cast. Yeah, this is bad. This we is, don't have a lot of cred. <laughs> I know, I feel terrible. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but look, I mean, I, I stole movies all the time. Yeah, exactly. And I always think to myself, well, I'm a critic, so I could just I could <laughs> request this if I wanted to, or I could just watch it. Not that I like review the things that I download or no, but it's like important it's really for just you a to justification. Have, yeah, it's important for you to have sort of a, a, a full understanding of the pop culture landscape. And that's why sometimes yeah, exactly. you have to, like, illegally <laughs> download Venom or whatever. <laughs> exactly. Okay. I've got some shit to show you in a second, but first I have to pee. Okay. Come on, take. Yo, it smells good. Josiah is peeing. That's why I'm yelling at you. Yeah, it's me in the oh my god, it smells so fucking good. Awesome. Not right Oh my god! Chewbacca died! What? Peter Mayhew died! That's a real guy? Yeah! Damn. Oh! I hate that the internet made it so I can't be sad about that. What do you mean? You can't be? Well, I just mean, like, you know, because it's like. Liking Star Wars is for assholes and losers now. I mean.
Hello? Hey, dude. Uh, Chewbacca died. I know. I saw that. I was going to get in trouble for not writing it. I know. I was just, like, yelling at Ashley and complaining about the fact that, like, like, I really do love Star Wars. And I feel like you can't love Star Wars anymore because, like, loving anything like that has just been, like, ruined by the people who, like, love it on the internet, you know? Well, think what May the Force be with you is going to be like well, now. It's like, I just can't believe, like, you know, it's like, I mean, I'm sure for everyone, it's like, you know, uh, anyway. I hate the fucking internet. I hate it. Okay, let's get back into it. Yep. So in my journey searching for covers, I've not found much, and yet I've found <laughs> oh so much. Oh, fuck. <laughs> and I thought, <sighs> first of all, I would start just by, like, seeing what kind of songs there are out there called Don't. Of course you, yeah, yeah. And we got to start with everyone's favorite um, Hobbit ass piece of shit. So oh, man, this episode is going to last two seconds on the internet. <laughs> Where does this song come in on this terrible video? This know, guy man. has this, this, have you ever heard this song? Like, can no. someone explain to me, please, how this guy is popular? Views. How, how is he popular? His music is so disgusting. Let's never sounds... talk, ab- let's never say his name. <laughs> yeah, okay, let's never say his name, That then we won't get flagged. Yeah. But this song is called Don't, and it's a huge hit. And it's like this fucking funky... This is absolute pickup artist music. <laughs> like... Last year she said, don't you worry if I disappear. I told her I'm not really looking for another mistake. I called an old friend thinking that the trouble would wait. Like, he's definitely a fucking pickup artist. This is the most incel sex music I've ever heard. Yeah, this is, like, music that, like, you, you know, use to brainstorm your various negging lines, too. (laughs) Also, his accent, I don't know if it's the same accent as, like, um, James Corden, but I feel like it's the same kind of, like... Oh, yeah, they come from the same village of, like... Do they actually? Soy boys. (laughs) No, I'm just guessing. (laughs) Soy boys, I, I like there's like, just something about it where like I I just like they come from Funko upon time <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just like oh I like I don't I this is someone who I truly don't understand the appeal of, and then it's like cool he's rapping now and you're like none of this is okay. Have you ever seen his tattoos? They're bad, and I have bad tattoos. All ta- <laughs> sorry, all tattoos are bad, but his are bad. Like yeah, like all tattoos are bad, but his are like. Like so aggressively, they're not even like bad in like the the irony bad either. Like there's nothing funny about them. They're just like they're just offensively bad. So and and, yeah. and let it, let us actually never utter his name on the pod. Maybe we have before once, but let's just make it a rule. Let's make a commitment from here on in to never never say it. It's fucking garbage, Hobbit man. It is one of those things where like the, the, like. As, as you get older, increasingly, there are things that are popular that you kind of don't understand. But I feel like for the most part, I can, like, I can work my way through things and be like, okay, like, you know, know I have enough of a sort of, like, uh, understanding of popular culture through stealing movies uh, that, like, <laughs> stuff I can at least sort of, like, work it through in my brain. This is one of those things where, like, I don't fucking get it. I don't get it at all. Yeah. It's the, oh, it's so gross. So that song was called Don't. Isn't it nice um, to just else... hate a popular thing, though, Josiah? Look at you. <laughs> well, welcome to my life, yes. You should tweet at him, and he's going to end up being, like, super down, and he's going to be like, oh, I love prenup, eh? <laughs> and then you're going to be <laughs> best friends with him. <laughs> yeah, be, like, seriously, how can people hate Imagine Dragons so much in a world where that <laughs> exists? It's insane. Yeah, why Like, why did they end up being the punchline? Like, they have comparatively done nothing to deserve it. Whereas this man was like, <laughs> you know what's good? Like, a guy with the acoustic guitar around the campfire, but also <laughs> guy who, like, thinks he can rap. Um, and, and also guy who's like just discovered Soka and, uh, is integrating that into those two worlds, um, with tremendous It's literally success. the, it's, it's when, um, it's when like incels discovered Justin Timberlake's, uh, um, suit and tie is the <laughs> Venn diagram of where he exists. <laughs> right, yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> but another person that I don't think I've ever heard until right now who has a song called Don't is Bryson Tiller. Oh, yes. Um, I don't know who that is really, but let's listen. The teens love him. 
Or they did. Really? I think now they're this all in their has, 20s. Yeah, this one also has 300 million views. <laughs> Jesus. The yeah. song Don't. I remember, like, Ash, Ashley had, like, and again, I think they're in their 20s now, but, like, she had, like, teenage cousins, and we'd be like, what do you guys listen to? And they were like, <laughs> Bryson Tiller and trap music, and we were like, what? Uh, I don't get the Bryson Tiller thing either, but... Don't play with a don't be this Don't Don't <laughs> Sounds like it's in the song to be honest on my end. <laughs> don't want you bad as ever. I mean, yeah, there you go. Another song called Don't. Um <laughs> and I like it. There's another cousin anecdote, so that's good. Yeah, that's true. So something else that happened in my travels, and I wrote this down this way. Actually, I'm going to play that in a second. But something else that happened in my travels that I started coming across um, songs called Don't Blink, which is another sort of interesting thing to happen. And I was reminded that... Do you think that's interesting? Don't don't Blink is also... (laughs) Yes, it is interesting. (laughs) Um, I mean, just imagine, like, how many things get inexplicably popular because they're accidentally two words that people are Googling all the time. I it's mean, amazing. That's how, like, I, I don't know if we've ever talked about, like, Motern Media, but, like, you know, that's a that's a man who has made a living. I mean, he's written, like, 17,000 songs that are on Spotify, and it's just based on the idea of, like, writing songs for things that people Google, like Poop Song. <laughs> right. Or, like, Song About Calgary. Like, he for sure has a song about Calgary. So it's just, it's just SEO, baby. Hell yeah, I love SEO. You know, an SEO thing is when I was in New York... I thought I'm gonna go to the Blink gym that has 155 in the. Oh address. yeah, you did it. I didn't actually go to that one. I just happened to walk by a Blink because what oh, happened okay. was <laughs> we've gotten too popular since then. So when I search Blink 155, I can only find things related to the pod. <laughs> Damn, it's kind of pain. disappointing. Success gets in your <laughs> way. That's tough. But this. Th- so one thing about Don't Blink that I'm not really gonna get into is like I guess that's like a Doctor Who thing. Don't Blink. I, I don't you know? know. That's not my particular type of nerdiness. I'm pretty sure th- um, it's popular in in the Shire that that one artist and James Corden are from. Yeah. But, yeah, I don't know. So th- don't blink is a phrase that pops up a lot. But then I thought, then I noticed this and I was like, oh, I got to play this. There's a song by Reliant K called Don't Blink. Wow. So, I mean. Congrats to yeah. you. Congrats to me, although <clears throat> this is Reliant K in 2013 and they're really trying to sound like Switchfoot. Like they're just trying to get like. Mom and dad money. It's not very pop punk. It's still good though. Yeah, I mean, it just sounds like Christian alternative rock at this point. <laughs> yeah, it's just, uh, uh, so I'll, I'll be honest, like, I was getting bits and pieces of that. Uh, we're trying a new recording setup behind the paywall. If there's like a really Is it cutting out po- for you it's sometimes? cutting out like crazy. Um, but uh, I did discover that uh, while it was paused, I was like, I might as well do something useful with my time, uh, that Joe Escalante is also a contributor to Ricochet, the conservative uh, website. So... Uh, <laughs> That's sick. Yeah, and that's Buddha money, baby. Yeah, so that's all. Uh, that's don't <laughs> don't uh, use Blink One Eighty Two to further a conservative agenda. I mean, they're probably down with it. I feel like they. I feel like they can see all sides. The, Mark Hobbs is in, definitely, in the worst possible way. <laughs> yeah, he's one of those people that like donates to both candidates just to ensure that he'll have their ear no matter who wins. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, the cutting out is driving me crazy. Yeah, well, look, we're close. We're, we're in covers. We're sort getting of, right? close. Yeah. We're getting close. So don't um, stop now. But just know that, like, if don't there's a, stop. an awkward pause, it's not that we've, like, um, lost our... Uh, Had a fight? We didn't have a fight yet. <laughs> yeah. We haven't fought. Um, we haven't, like, lost our, our zip and our, uh, our, our delightful um, uh, chemistry, but it's just the <laughs> internet. <laughs> And it's me being distracted looking up, like, how conservative is Joe Escalante. 
Exactly. Okay, this one I think might be a, this song I think might be about Doctor Who because it's called Don't Blink. I wasn't gonna play it, but then I was like, I gotta play it. Look at this band. They, I think they're called the Nevers with two V's, or they might be called Professional Superheroes. Oh, hard to say, but uh, hard to oh, not actually, well, like says, uh, this photo. Like, may, maybe they're covering the Nevers because the description says covers of various amazing artists by Humboldt County's Professional Superheroes. Um, and this is just very fucked sounding. Yeah, these people I would just say look like a comic. Con- like they're they're like lazy cosplayers, maybe. Yeah, because like they're not seemingly playing anything recognizable. They're just dressed up like <laughs> dorks dressing up. Like that's the costume. <laughs> it's like imagine yeah. a nerd in a in you know at a convention, and it's this. It's like it's like in <laughs> before Happy Birthday entered public domain, and you could never sing Happy Birthday in a movie. <laughs> this is yeah. like a TV show that can't. Like, actually have people dressed up as, like, Superman. So instead they have a guy in, like, a construction outfit that is sort of Superman colors. Yeah, it's almost like a approximation of YMCA village people look. But then, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's very, very confusing. It's, it's cosplay sp- CA conf- for sure. Especially, it's especially confusing when you hear this. To being like white belt kind of stuff. Yeah, but it's, it it's like broken up. side. It was so weird. <laughs> that thing where you're like, I don't know if these people I like fully understand the, the scope of what they're doing, but it's incredible. It's so fucked. Okay, there's a couple more still. Um, because now we're into like the realm of people who have used the term don't blink to upload rap songs that are them rapping over Adam's song for some reason. What? <laughs> multiple of this. Okay, this is <laughs> yeah. great. I, okay, I hope the connection gets better because I am excited about these. Yeah, this is, so this is from Trusty Customers. one of the two but it was already pretty good (laughs) i mean yeah like if that's the like the floor i'm excited to hear the ceiling yeah so the next one is uploaded by kirby um and it's it just says don't blink 182 um and there's like a very hip a very hip uh cover art for it that has like a cherry on a sock like this this person is clearly fucking online this is from three months ago so we would have never even been able to have it when uh, we did the Adam Song episode, so this was meant to be. Okay. So uh, l- let's check it out. comment on here is someone wrote you sound a bit like a little peep and they've replied means a lot thank you <laughs> which just shows like how accelerated culture is too and also probably because a little peep passed away but there's definitely a time 
like 18 months ago that that would have been considered an insult, I think. Yeah, that's true. But also, like, they were clearly deliberately trying to sound like little peeps. So I, I, I can understand them being like, thank you for noticing. Yeah, I guess it, it would be better than if they were like, what are you talking about? <laughs> no, I'm not. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Here, but then someone asked Lone Wolf Beat and then like, no, sir, but you're right. Sounds like it. Isn't the beat just the Blink song? I mean, it's kind of like m- messed up. Okay. It's, it's switched up a bit. I don't know. Fucking these 16 year olds are going to say all kinds of shit to each other <laughs> and we're never going to understand it. No. Or at least they don't like the, the ginger British man whose name cannot be uttered. <laughs> you cannot be named. <laughs> I love that. Um, unfortunately, there's like no there's no songs that have like someone singing this song, but there is a Kenny Chesney song called Don't Blank. <laughs> OK. And I was worried that. I didn't want to get us shut down by copyright issues, so I've only wrote down the covers, but then I went ahead and played some very expensive songs <laughs> in here to begin yeah. with. So. This is a million dollar episode. <laughs> this is the episode that takes down the Blink-155 Empire. Well, you know, this exact thing happened with uh, my friend Emily this week. Um, are you there? Yeah. I think oh, it's, it's, been, it's, it's so getting, choppy. It's getting choppy, yeah. We're, we're good. We're so close. But just every, so everyone close. know we're we're uh, yeah <laughs> we're so um, close. My friend Emily from she lives in Winnipeg this week. She she like was confronted by all these fucking right wing pieces of shit from the Rebel, which is like a Canadian uh, hate site, or, basically. Yeah, <laughs> Alle- uh, yeah, allegedly, alleged say, hate site. To, was she the one who was like straight up accosted like outside of her house? Yeah, and then she started playing, like, a Beyonce song on her phone, and then there's, like, a huge thing on The Rebel about how she was censoring them by playing a Beyonce song because they can't legally play the audio of them <laughs> confronting her now. So it's a genius That's move. That's so to Emily. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So all I'm saying is, like, maybe that's why this happened on the pod this week is, like, we're realizing, in fact, maybe if we play enough copyrighted things, then if you're protesting and some right-wing people come over and try to hassle you, <laughs> then you can play just the play pod. the pod. <laughs> that is, oh, my God, dude, the pod is activism. Exactly. That's what I've been trying to say. Going online and doing shit. No, it's really not. Doing posts um, is activism. But, anyway, but anyway, so there's a Kenny Chesney song called Don't Blink, but these uh, covers of it are even funnier. This is by Brandon Prestig- Prestigiacomo. Wait, are you just playing um, covers of a Kenny Chesney song? I just want to make sure I fully understand. Yeah, I am. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, you, and, and just so everyone knows. Sam literally can't really hear the music. No, every time the music starts, setup. like, <laughs> my stream stops entirely. So it's just like, you're just doing <laughs> so, this for yourself now. Exactly. Which is like, a, again, we're, this is a classic trope. We are making the subtext the text. <laughs> Turned on the evening news, so an old man being interviewed turning a hundred and two today. Asked him what's the secret to life. He looked from his old time, laughed and said, All I can say is, Don't wait, just like that. I mean, I sent you the link so you can at least get a vibe of what I just experienced with the nation. <laughs> yeah, if you could just sort of share vibes with me while I sit here in silence. <laughs> Yo, what? That's the. Um, he kind of looks like a small version of the of the 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 boy child, the the boy child star, who shall not be named. <laughs> yeah. Who shall not be named. Yeah, it's like such a cursed photo. And then everyone's like, for some reason, this got so this got 122,000 plays. Um, and there's a good mix. It's kind of like the uh, the Creed video that I did where there's people telling him to kill himself but other people being like, don't listen to the haters. Yes, you're a fucking terrible singer and perhaps they're right, but, um, you know. <laughs> don't die. Whatever. What do you say of encouragement of those situations? I don't really know. Did but. that many people tell you to kill yourself when you posted your Creed cover? Oh, yeah. Yeah, a bunch. Damn. It's pretty cool. Sorry, man. Well, uh, you they, know, weren't you were... savage as, <laughs> they weren't as savage as Olivia Munn's army of wine moms that came after me. <laughs> but, <right>. um, 
<laughs> but okay, so Sam's not going to be able to hear it, but I'm going to close out the episode with one last um, cover, and it's an actual cover of the song from Strum182, who is someone that pops up a lot, doing sick guitar videos. And I like how the True Heads do, like, actual... Like, they go deep into the catalog. Yeah, like, they the don't fact just, that like, dick around. no covers except for one of these people is kind of amazing. And so... This was only uploaded in 2018, and the response says, Hello, I haven't been uploading much, mainly because I couldn't find the right tone, you know? What? And now I found it, and I'm very pleased with the way my guitar sounds. That is so sick. Strum 182 I mean, has been on that pursuit of tone. Exactly. And, like, what a cool thing to do for a song like this, too. Like, you've just been searching for this, like, shitty, old, early Blink-182 style tone. It's so sick. Yeah, it's amazing. So I'm going to play this, and Sam's not going to be able to hear because we've got to adjust some audio settings next time. <laughs> yeah, we're close, though. We're so close. <laughs> we're getting closer. <laughs> it's only taken us almost 100 episodes. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, a couple things that I just noticed from what I just heard that you didn't hear. Um. <laughs> yeah, describe the song to me, please. Normally, this is not oh. our problem. It's that we need to describe the visuals, but yeah. Yeah. Okay, a couple things is that A, there's egregious, which I probably am saying that word wrong. Just please give me a fucking break. Egregious. How do you say that word? Egregious, Who yeah. Knows? I'm saying it right, and now I'm just so insecure about all words Aww. at all times. Um, there's egregious double kick use on this, and that is one thing that I do really respect about Travis is that he doesn't use a double kick pedal, because it's in this song, and it does not need to be, and it's like, you can hear it. You can hear the clicking of it like crazy, and it's quite annoying. Yeah, double kick is like exclusively for metal. Like, I only want to hear it in a Mashuga song. Yeah, because even when it's in, like, the pop-punk beat, then it just ends up sounding like no effects, which is almost too mechanical at this point. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I only want to hear it in, like, I, I want it to pummel as opposed to drive. And I feel like uh, pop good pop-punk does not pummel. And also, for me, I guess I could just never even imagine wanting to hear a Meshuggah song, so that's already <laughs> where I'm confused <laughs> by what you're saying. What do you but do I, to work I out? Do you just, like, it. listen to Vampire Weekend while you're, like, crushing <laughs> out the out. last rep? <laughs> When I when I work out, I listen to Your Kickstarter Sucks, and it's just, like, two <laughs> very sleepy guys in basketball shorts just, like, talking with very low energy. And somehow I just run while that's on. Wild. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so there's that. And then also, I think this song would actually be a hit if the chorus was different because what happens is they didn't know how to write songs yet, and it goes to a different key by accident and everything just sounds really off and weird and it sounds like a 13 year old wrote it but otherwise like there's a lot of cool stuff going on there's like a rising bass line and there's a build but then it's just that that different key that fucks everything up yeah thanks for describing the song to me man it's like I just feel like I've lost <laughs> one of my senses I'm just all alone <laughs> over here just you, you start to play the song I'd be like oh and then it would just drop out and then I just sit here and read more about how, how Chewbacca died so like uh, I'm, I'm having a very different pod experience from you but I'm grateful that, that there was something for you to enjoy tonight this is going to be the worst May the 4th be with you of your life isn't it <laughs> it is it's, uh, yeah a real lonely one over here so I guess I mean I don't know there's more a couple more shit shits that I could play but it, our audio is all fucked up I know you gotta go and I have no life so I'm just gonna sit here and stare at my computer in <laughs> silence as I do every other week between pods and just like sit in the same chair sort of like a powered off real doll it's like <laughs> I was thinking it's more like today's special like you were just like a mannequin or like a, a mouse <laughs> puppet or something but I prefer to think that yeah uh, you're just like a, a real doll that we just fill up with our content uh, <laughs> once a week. <laughs> Don't.
So everything you say now is like legally binding. It could cost you a future career in politics. So, okay. you know, tread carefully, Claire. Okay, well, only one word answers. <laughs> yeah, just be really, really coy about this. Yeah. Well, you could get away with it because, Claire, this is – you are maybe the biggest get so far of the pod. Oh, so, absolutely. Yeah, we've got, you know – uh, Dan Reynolds from Imagine Dragons. That's cool. We have like people who are very popular on Instagram for making memes, but no one gives a shit about them. No. But I am here talking to at the Clarebot, Twitter power user at the Clarebot, uh, who only recently conducted a poll to see if she should join uh, the Pod Nash, which uh, it looks like you got 68 votes in that poll and 76% of people said yes. So I'd love to know who the <laughs> handful of people were who were like, please don't bother. I'm not interested. It was probably Ashley. I'm um, sure it was just Ashley vo- voting from her multiple alt accounts. Yeah, no, I've uh, listened to the pod a few times. <laughs> uh, basically, like, Fast forwarded to just when I know that there is CBC content. Yes, yes, that's right. You look like you engaged a lot with Mark Little when he was on the pod to talk about Murdoch Mysteries and Mr. D. Sam, that was a rush. I <laughs> to have any engagement at all and to have it be someone from Mr. D was incredible. <laughs> I'm so I'm so happy that the pod was able to provide um, that that CBC connection for you. Thank you. Thank you. So for people who are not familiar with At The Claire Bot, a little bit of context for me. Uh, I, I personally think that you are, you're like Drill or like uh, Ice-T or you are one of the most important, uh, most relevant um, accounts on the, the hell, hellish website of, of Twitter.com. Yeah. Uh, but you are also, in it, so in addition to that, which, you know, let us, let us uh, ensure that you are not being defined by uh, the man in your life, but you are also married to the, uh, I guess, brewer at large of the pod, Patrick <laughs> Wynn yeah. Williams. Yeah. And uh, I don't know if it's official yet, but there's talks of like an official yeast sponsor. So. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. When we saw each other this weekend, uh, Pat, no longer with Blood Brothers, but now making yeast uh, out in the wilds of Ontario. And so, you know, yeah, just, just to sort of like give people a little peek behind the curtain, future sponsorships, I might be munching on some yeast in, in coming episodes, which is very exciting. Yeah, yeah. Now, my impression of your impression of the pod is that it is entirely filtered through Pat because you recently went on a massive, like full North American road trip all the way to the North, all the way to the bottom. Yeah. And did you guys have a rule about listening to the pod? Like explain to me how, because you also tweeted me a lot about coming on the pod. Let's be honest. I have uh, a, a tweet from, um, uh, uh, on April 10th, maybe, uh, to me and Josiah. Hi, guys. Are we recording? Um, there's uh, another one from, uh, you know, like, when am I coming on the pod from February, I think. So so you've been agitating for a position here for a while. Um, I have, and it's because I have a mole that, like, lives in your home. <laughs> right, yeah. When uh, I'm in the thread with Ashley, I often hear that she's being held hostage by the pod and, like, she can't kind of rummage through the kitchen and stuff as she wanted, which I think she's actually just started doing anyway. Um, but whenever I get like a little taste that it's happening, I really try and engage. Uh, I, <laughs> in addition from being like drill or whoever else you said, I'm also one of the least followed people on Twitter. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Oh all yeah. I, all I want is an audience. So, so if we can, you know, rectify this, I mean, you're going to have to be entertaining over the next 10 minutes, but right now you have 163 followers, uh, which is, I believe, a travesty for, for one of Twitter's best accounts. So, um, yeah, you know, we'll see where this sits in like a three hour episode. There is probably no one listening right now, but um, <laughs> if you are, if you're still sticking around, throw the Claire bot a follow, let the Claire bot in. Please. And so, so yeah, tell me, okay. So between Ashley messaging you from the other room saying like, you know, I'm being held hostage by Sam and his appalling hobby. And yeah. then your husband in your own house, um, like trying to explain who Bill Billingsley is to you. Like, I'm curious what your kind of perception of the pod is and how it gels with your perception of Blink-182. Because I actually realized that I have no idea how you actually feel about the band Blink-182. So the only feelings I have are like anima of the state related. When yeah. I was like maybe in grade nine, whenever that album came out, 
I bought it and I listened to it continuously for like probably months. But the songs that like mostly stand out in my memory are the aliens exist one and Dumpweed, and that's just about it. So I don't actually know how much else I listened to. I think I just like loved those two songs. I mean, those are jams. Those are you. You made the right choice. And then through Pat and through like occasionally hearing the pod on your road trip, what was the deal with the pod on the road trip? Like, were you was it banned from the car, or did he did he get to have little tastes uh, throughout your vacation? He definitely had little tastes. I think they were mostly when I was asleep. But (laughs) my main problem with the pod is that it's just so niche. Like, I don't know it well enough to really understand and sometimes it just goes into like an hour long of um covers of songs i don't know and so when you're on the outside of that the patience is not always (laughs) there but you know i really appreciate it i'm shocked to hear that the pod is occasionally alienating for uh listeners who are not deeply engrossed in its mythology (laughs) Yeah, I'm sorry I have to be the one to tell you that. That's, yeah, that's, this has rocked me to my core. Do you think that Pat playing it while you're, like, sleeping and being rocked gently in a car explains part, part of this trend of you having dreams about Josiah? <laughs> I thought about that today. Um, I think that what is actually happening is, like, right before I go to bed, sometimes I'll check Twitter, and whoever is, like, most in my feed, right. it's like my brain just banks that, and it's like... We're going to have a beautiful dream about this person. (laughs) So you're having dreams about not just Josiah, but Josiah's, like, hellish Twitter presence? Yeah, yeah. And, like, just to give you a taste, like, when you messaged me today, (laughs) you were asking about this, I was like, what even were my dreams? And one of them, like, to go into, like, how it's connected to his Twitter presence was I had a dream that he and I were in an improv troupe, and he just mooned the audience the whole time. (laughs) That was, like, his his bit? That was his, like, kind of contribution? That was his, like, one bit. Um, And also, because I've never actually met Josiah in person, he always, like, looks a bit funny in my dreams. And so in this one, I said that he looked like he was in DK mode, like he had been in (laughs) GoldenEye. That's that's amazing. And then what about so yeah, scrolling up. Um, uh, it, so you, one of the last messages that, that you sent me in the particular thread where we were talking about recording today is um, uh, Sam. I had another dream about Josiah. Uh, in my dream, I was recording things about him to show him in the future. And one of the things I recorded was what his favorite food was, and I wrote it down so in five years he could look back and reflect on how much he had he had changed. Do you know what Josiah's favorite food was? An answer that would be held in a time capsule and revealed years later. Uh, and then I responded chicken, which I don't know if I asked Josiah or I was just being glib, and you said yes. So yeah. was that your recollection of your food time capsule dream with Josiah? I wish I could say that I had a better recollection of these dreams, but I feel like I like write them down when I wake up to Josiah, who I don't know to communicate <laughs> this to. Um, and so I just, I think that I just thought that uh, it was like such an intense dream and like capturing these details were so valuable. And the fact that it was just chicken, I thought was very funny, but I feel like as a community, Twitter has decided that they like hate hearing about people's dreams, but I still like love it a lot. And not only do I love it, I will like tell strangers <laughs> about my dreams about them. So uh, this might not, this might be uh, too um, uninteresting for people. I, I mean, I assure you at this point in the pod, nothing is too uninteresting for whoever is left listening. Okay, good. So who's like the most famous person that you've tweeted at to tell them about your dream? Um, probably to be fair, Josiah, it's like, (laughs) like at arm's length, Um, (laughs) but yeah, no one, no one else. Okay. Well, I think you should like get in the habit of like when you dream about Mark Little, like when you have your kind of CBC (laughs) dreams. Yeah. (laughs) So I I also, I do want to talk a little bit about uh, your CBC obsession because that's been a, like, not quite uh, an inepsy style, like overarching uh, major theme of the pod for the last couple of weeks, but CBC yeah. has been bubbling under in a big way, sort of culminating with with Mark Little's appearance. And you're maybe like the denouement of the of the CBC arc. Okay. okay. Do okay. you feel that you have been you are in the process of being vindicated for like a lifetime of posting about CBC 
Absolutely. <laughs> I feel like very strongly about this. I was talking about it today. <laughs> I told some friends that I felt like I kind of like discovered CBC. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Like, the comment wasn't even acknowledged. <laughs> like No one even responded to it. So I think that people's patience with all of my CBC related talking has just like gone to zero. But uh, it has been, yes, so vindicating. Yeah, because like you, like I started tweeting about a couple of CBC shows, not adding you, like not sort of in your direction. And all of a sudden you were just like immediately in my menchies being like, you know, finally, there's a bit of shame associated with, but I felt like mostly you were happy that I was uh, becoming a real gem head. Yeah, definitely. And the fact that you're getting into shows that I haven't even heard of, like Farm Crime. Oh, like it's- Farm Crime's so good. Like, that to me is, like, quintessential CBC. And to know that there's, like, a beautiful show like that out there that I haven't even watched, it's just, like, so exciting to me, that potential. <laughs> right. So what are what is your favorite CBC show? Like, if you – knowing that you, you are speaking to an international audience – Mm-hmm. Um, that's heard me talk about Cavendish and Street Sense. What what for you is maybe like the best entry entryway into CBC? And then what's like once once you're acclimatized, once your body is sort of in those CBC waters, you're 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 uh, you're just surrounded by liquid CBC. Uh, the right kind of deep cut. So I think that I need to preface this with like when I first started watching CBC, it was because we got a digital cable and CBC was literally the only channel that we could right. get. And so I uh, only watched CBC. And so I feel like my perception of what is actually good is really skewed with like just what was accessible at the time. But I remember one night I was watching obviously CBC and uh, Mr. D was on and I always had like this idea that it was like a terrible show, but I watched it and I actually thought some of it was very funny. And then I found that it was on Netflix and I just like binged it. And I think that that show is actually incredible and very well written. I don't know what the later seasons are like, but the first five seasons are amazing. But like when you're really in that like deep CBC haze and you kind of like forget that there are other shows and channels, there's like a little thing called Murdoch mysteries. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so you're a, you're a doc head, right? I'm definitely a dirty Murdy, (laughs) Um, but it is um, like a, (laughs) I said that it was like the Canadian equivalent of CSI on a Canadian budget. Like it has absolutely no budget. Like it's not um, high tech at all. Murdoch is a detective who like (laughs) rides a single speed bicycle um and like has no <laughs> other tools at his disposal right and but is, sorry does he ride the single speed because he's like a hipster or does he ride the single speed bike because it's like olden times oh it's definitely olden times okay just for clarity for for yeah. for, for the non-dirty murdies out there oh i kind of forget that people aren't but thank you for clarifying mm-hmm. um yeah and it's amazing so I'm just uh, I, I did just like a quick Twitter search for your username and CBC, and I don't know that I even realized how much you tweet about uh, C- CBC. Um, so hold on, where's uh, I only do this is from 2017, November 21st. I only do ab crunches at the gym so my stomach can handle the laughs from Mr. D on CBC. Otherwise, my sides would split open. It would be a bloodbath. Um, let's see. Um, what will it take to get a sweet, delicious RT for Mr. C, uh, Mr. D on CBC? I am your biggest ambassador. Uh, I didn't think I could love CBC, famously known as home to the greatest show of all time, Murdoch Mysteries More, but I just started listening to, oh, Secret Life of Canada, and turns out the limits of my love could be tested and grow and evolve. Uh, there's a photo of you wearing CBC uh, socks. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I love Mr. D. I would like a walk on roll. I think I would steal the show at Mr. D on CBC. Um <laughs> I am pre-gaming for at working moms. Who's with me? I'm going to be tailgating in the CBC parking lot. I have hot dogs and brews. Come hang. Like, do you think that, cause I know that I notice everyone, even if I'm not constantly like engaging with people who like tweet at the pod, that's mostly Josiah. I am extremely aware of probably like every single person that has shown remote interest in Blink-55, in junior battles, in this exists. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, I know their first and last names. I, there's a good chance I know their birthday. I like pretend that I'm cool about it, but I'm not. I'm like obsessed with the idea that anyone likes what I do. Do you think that 
like the mothership has has ever like gazed like the its eye upon you and blessed you like have you ever gotten that sweet like or is it mostly was it all leading up to the mark little interaction no the like part of the reason why i love cbc so much like as a very desperate tweeter like no one ever engages with me <laughs> cbc is so under the radar that like for a long time no matter who you tweeted at they would like or engage in some way and that just gives me, you know, like the hugest rush. So <laughs> it just like maximized my drive to like really reach out constantly trying to get that engagement. Um, and so like, you know, like the Shit's Creek people, Kim's Convenience people, like they've all like pressed the like button for my tweets, but nothing <laughs> further. Um, but I want like the main account, like CBC to engage with me in some way. That's really cool. Okay. So that's what this is building up to. Cause I can see, this is a tweet, uh, from Halloween a couple of years ago that was liked by Mr. D on CBC. Are you all spooked out because of Halloween? Well, good news at Mr. D CBC is bringing the screams of laughter, which is, that's a good one. <laughs> Yeah, and he liked it. And he, so. Yeah, he liked it. Very validating. Like, the only thing that would make Master of None better if it was on, was if it was on CBC. Like this is you are you are straight up a CBC Stan account, eh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I don't think I realized it had gotten that far until I got a tweet from Ashley once that said, "Claire, change the channel." <laughs> <laughs> I like to know that Ashley is sort of judging both of our media habits from like from the same <laughs> spot in my house. Yeah, just from the couch on our phone. Just lots of shame. So maybe we can kind of leapfrog, like push past Mark, maybe get Mark to uh, like if you tweet at Mark again or something and then like, you know, Josiah and I or the pod can jump in and try to engage with it. And then we'll loop in the CBC account because at that point, (laughs) if you had like two verified accounts tweeting at the CBC account, like maybe they I don't know. Do they respond with like some sort of like, you know, reaction gif or whatever? Like do you think would that be good enough for you? Like anything would be good enough. I have no engagements on Twitter. So like anything is amazing. Um, A like, like something even so minor would just thrill me. Okay. Okay. So we'll, we'll work towards it. Claire, I'm glad we finally delivered on um, something you have been asking for. It turns out since like a couple of months, actually, after the pod started, uh, when we had Chris Farron on the pod, you tweeted at us, oh my God, you just had a Chris on last week. Give me a spot. (laughs) Uh, which was like the start of a run of Chris's. So we finished the Chris's and we're on to the Claire's. Do you come next? H C B C G H I J K L. Yeah, there you go. So alphabetically, you are following all the Chris's and eventually we'll get to people whose names don't start with C's. And Sam, I see this as like like a weekly thing for me. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. I think this will become like a little, uh, like the Claire bot corner, uh, that we do. We can check in on what Murdoch okay. is up to and, and how the, uh, how your quest to be engaged with by the mothership account goes. Yeah. And like maybe after you're done all the blank 182 songs, you could do like a Murdoch mysteries ep by ep <laughs> show. And there's like 15 seasons of it. To be honest, like th- this is actually what you should do. Claire, you should start because I think at one point you and a uh, friend of the pod, uh, Jess Stein, were going to do a song by song Dave Matthews band podcast. Yeah. That was, this was like many moons ago, uh, which, which never transpired. I think you were mostly having, having a laugh. But maybe this is your thing. Maybe you actually should do a like – if not an episode by episode, like a show by show. So you do an episode about Mr. D, an episode about Murdoch Mysteries, an episode about Street Sense, and so on and so forth. Yeah, or just Murdoch Mysteries. Right, okay, or just Murdoch You're right, yeah. So you, you do you. do you. So I guess is that – this is normally where we we get someone to promote their podcast or their album or, or their meme page or whatever. So obviously we're promoting at the Claire Bot. And then is, is there anything else uh, that is important for us to promo for you at this point? hour four of the podcast here. I would really like everyone to take like quick 30 minutes to Google ringette and (laughs) really acquaint yourselves with what it is, which is the furthest reach I've ever had. And this is a dream come true. Ringette is the fastest (laughs) game on ice and I want the nation to just love it so much. Do they play ringette in like Australia or England or is, the, or is Ringette – I know it was invented by a Canadian because you've told me this before. It was absolutely invented by a Canadian. They play it in uh, like Scandinavia, but they should play it in every country because 
it is the best sport. Like as soon as people catch a glimpse, they're going to be hooked and they're going to want to play just even watch. Like I just really want people to carve out some time and just settle into some YouTube videos or like a nice Wikipedia page and just really like immerse yourself in it. Okay. So ring it Murdoch mysteries at the Clarebot. Do you feel that sort of encompasses your brand fairly? Yes. That's fair. Thank you for your time, Claire. Thank you, Sam. Don't blink. Just like that, you're six years old and you take a nap and you wake up and you're 25 and your high school sweetheart becomes your wife. Don't blink. Just like this, your baby's growing like mine did. Learning into moms and dads. Next thing you know, you better have. Of 50 years is there and then And you pray to God takes you instead Trust me friend A hundred years goes faster than you think Don't blink 